Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I was going to stand up but decided that I'd sit down. It's getting harder and harder for me to stand up in one spot for long periods of time. Um, you might hear the rooster going off a couple times. I just wanted to do some outdoor because we're going to start getting some rain here eventually. Supposed to. We keep getting told. I keep telling people God's the one in charge of the weather, not the the weather people, the news media and everything. But um, winter's here, it's supposed to be rainy, and then I'm stuck inside. So I wanted to do some outdoor studies. So today, uh, okay, I wanted to talk about are we under the law? And I put the S there in parentheses. Or under grace? Question mark. Okay. What's going on in the world today is you're being told that you're not under the law, but under grace by this e all these false religions and easy believism. Simply believe in your head and you're saved. And they keep coming back with that you're not under the law. And the life that they live is they're saying, basically they're saying you're not under the laws, plural, but under grace. You're not under any law. You know? You just believe in your head, you're saved, and you can go back living like the world, looking like the world, acting like the world. But what does the Bible really say? Because they'll, they'll turn to Romans 6.14. Okay, we got a lot of scripture. Get out your King James Bibles and follow along. I had someone give me a hard time because I don't open and turn the pages. I'm very slow at page turning and an hour study can turn into like an hour and a half to two hour study as I'm trying to flip through the pages. So there's nothing wrong with me reading the Bible that I've printed out because this is the same King James Bible as this is. This is the King James Bible. This is the King James Bible. Okay, I print out the Word of God from the King James Bible. So follow along, pause the video, okay? Um, I don't mind, when I watch a Bible study from a brethren, I know, going away from the study for a second, but when I watch a Bible study from a brethren that's an hour long, I pause and turn, pause and turn, pause and turn. I'll highlight, there's times I'm sitting there highlighting, and an hour study turns into two and a half hours, okay? But it's worth it. Pause the video, turn to the scriptures, follow along, okay? Romans 6.14, they'll read Romans 6.14, and only Romans 6.14 most of the time. It says here, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. And as we go through this study, brother says Christ, remember, I'm going to drill this until it gets right into our heads. It says the law singular. We always read this, it says, oh, it's talking about the Levitical laws, the old Levitical laws and stuff like that. Um, in a way, you can apply that, but notice it says the law singular. It's not talking about the Levitical laws plural here. It's talking about one law, singular, the law, singular. All right. But under grace. That's all they'll read, and then they'll try to go around and just say, look at all the grace, and they go off of grace, 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 grace. We're not under the law, but under grace. Now, I'm not saying this isn't true, but you see all these false converts, they'll live their life like they're not under any laws. You can be as gods. I'm my own god. I do what I want, when I want. I find groups that are okay with my sin. I find groups that don't judge, so even if they're not okay with my sin, I can still continue in them because they don't believe in judging. Okay? So we're going to look at some passages where it talks about the law, where you see where it says the law, and it uses it singular. And then we're going to talk about what law is it talking about. And as a Christian today, are you under any law? See, if I was asked if I'm under the law or under grace... My first, when I was newly saved, I would have probably slipped up and said, I'm just under grace. But after doing a Bible, a thorough Bible study, guess what? If you asked me if I was under the law, singular, and you don't specify what law, you just say law, and, and say under, or under grace, I'd tell you I'm under both. After doing this study, I'm under both. Okay. I'm under a law. Okay, the law. But you have to be specific. And they won't tell you what law. And then they go on and live in their life. Like I said, they just live their life like they're not under any law, period. We're not under the laws, but under grace. They'll add an S there. 
Let's get to the study. Uh, the law, singular. Turn to John 1.17. For the law, that we see it again, singular, was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You don't have to turn there, but John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So you see, for the law singular was given by Moses. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so I'm not going to say what the law is until we get to the scriptures, where the scriptures describe what the law that's being talked about here, okay? It says the law singular. Okay, it's talking about everything as a whole is summed up under one law. The Ten Commandments, the Levitical laws. Basically, when God gives a command and someone goes against that command, the Bible calls that sin. And when you, are, when you commit sin, you are now under a specific law singular. Okay. But here it says, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. See, Jesus it wasn't about the law. Jesus wasn't about the law. What about Matthew 5.17? Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle, shall no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. Singular. Turn to Luke 20, 22. It reads here, Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? Why did I read this one? Well, you read throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, He was perfect. He kept the law. He was perfect. He obeyed the law. His parents had to give sacrifice, the turtle doves, okay, because that was the law. Okay. The laws of the Old Testament, laws plural. He obeyed all the Old Testament laws. He was perfect. They kept trying to test him. Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar? You know, to, almost like you're worshiping a false god is what they're trying to imply. But he put them in their place. They tried to get him with your healings, uh, t turning healings into works on the Sabbath day. Right. Now you're not supposed to do works on the Sabbath day. And Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. But you healing somebody, it's not a work of the law. Right. Now what law singular did Jesus fulfill? We're going to get to that. <laughs> I want to keep going for a little bit and just keep hammering. We keep seeing this all throughout the Bible. The law, the law. Sometimes the law is referring to the Old Testament Levitical laws. Sometimes. But a lot of times when we read through the Bible, we see the law is referring to one law. That's why it says the law. And when it says the law referring to the Old Levitical law, it's with all of them summed up as one law. Okay, but they're still the law singular. Turn to Romans 5.20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. <laughs> Victoria's getting up and walking around. Sorry about that. Stay. We see there, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. So when the law came in, there's supposed to be a fence. You know, kind of like godly sorrow. The law comes in. We're going to talk about it. And it gets you to see that what you're, you're, that you're sinning against God and the cost of that sin that brings offense might abound. You've offended God. And then you start getting offended at yourself. But where sin abounded... Wait a minute. It says, more of the law entered that the offense might abound... See the contrast, law, offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace must did, more, did much more abound. Okay? So the law has something to do with sin. We see that there. And the biggest thing I want to talk about there for a second is testimonies. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the biggest thing I get from that is the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Do you know how people 
a lot of people were getting saved. You had someone that God saved that was so horrible and God turned his life around or her life around. And she had a testimony. or He had a testimony. And people looked at that man or that woman and say, Wow, I used to think God couldn't save me. I'm horrible. There's just, I'm just too horrible. The things that I've done, God can't save me. And they look and there's some person stands up there that's 50 times worse than they are. And, go, and they look and go, God saved him? God saved her? Old man's dead and buried? New man that gave him a new life? Fresh start? They're not the same man they were anymore. Not the same woman they were. God saved them? If God can save them, God can save me. That's what that's all about. Okay, Testimonies are important. Some people, they don't have much of a testimony. I understand that. Um, but when you actually grow as a Christian, you look back, you start seeing more and more of the wickedness of your past and the mistakes of your past, the lies that you were told of your past, and your testimony will grow a little bit. Okay? But that's what testimonies are for. Okay? He, that loved, uh, he that was forgiven much loves much, but he that's forgiven little loveth little. I'm trying to remember the para, uh, Jesus was talking to somebody um, when it comes to the woman. Okay? Oh, no, he did a parable about uh, one man owed 10 pence, one man owed like 300, 500, something like that, pence. I didn't put this in my notes, I'm sorry. But he who much is forgiven loveth much, but he that's forgiven little loveth little. Okay. The testimony there, it leads people to Christ. Okay. Turn to Hebrews 8.10. Okay. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws, plural, this is plural, laws, into their mind, and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. There was the old, like the, there's the Old Testament laws that are schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, and then there, which we're going to get to, and then there was Old Testament laws that were to separate the Jewish people from the world. These are my people. Okay? The laws are plural here. There's a lot of Levitical laws that separate the Jewish people from the rest of the world. You have the Sabbath day, you have Passover, you have Feast of Tabernacles, Days of Unleavened Bread. Okay? Now, as we're going through this study, we're going to get to a point where I'm going to ask you to seriously think about this. Do we have like something like that today? Is there a law today that separates us, the body of Christ, Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women, from the world? I wanted to keep that in mind. But you see how it says it says plural, not singular. It's not talking about the law that we're going to be talking about. It's talking about different laws that he gives to his people that separate them from the world. So they're set apart from the world. Turn to Romans 2.15. What about us today? We saw up there that's written their hearts. The laws into their mind and written their hearts. Remember, Hebrews is written to Hebrews in the time of Jacob's trouble. What about Romans 2.15? Which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. This is a whole other study. I did a study on conscience, but your conscience, I believe, has to do with the fact that you have a dead spirit. So since you're dead spiritually, God gives you a backup system. It's called a conscience. Your conscience keeps pointing your heart to the laws that are written on, it, on the heart, saying, hey, you're not supposed to be doing this. Hey, you're supposed to be doing that. Something's not right with you. There's not something not right with this world. You're missing something. You need something. You need someone. Jesus Christ. Okay. I'll start all over because I lost my place. Romans 2.15 Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. I underline excusing one another because that goes back to what I said. They'll look for a group that's non-judgmental. We're not judgmental. Oh, God will forgive you. 
all just making excuses for one another. They're all their sins. They all live in wicked, wicked sin, look like the world, act like the world, and they just make excuses for one another. And what do they do? They end up accusing us. You know, we have a changed life. But they'll accuse us, and they'll excuse one another. When you sin, they accuse you hardcore. Because you're truly saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing man who repented, believed, confessed both in prayer, and asked God to save you. They'll accuse you, but they'll excuse one another. What's going on here? They're still under the law. We're not under a certain law when it says the law. But we're under another law that's the law. <laughs> we'll get to that. Okay, Verse 16. And the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, the great white throne. You have so many people that claim, I'm saved in this world today. Religious people. I'm Christian. Or I'm a saved man. I'm going to heaven you know, because I'm one with myself. Buddhism or something like that. I'm one with myself, so I'm going to go to a per paradise. It's heaven. All these false religions. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm... If you're going to heaven, then you're claiming you belong to Jesus Christ. Okay, You're going to be judged according to Paul's gospel. Repentance towards God happens in the heart. Change of heart. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Where does that happen? Well, that's right. In the heart. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Not the head. The heart. You confess both in prayer. Why? To prove that you're not ashamed. Where does that happen? In the heart. Not up here. It's here. And then you ask God to save you. Why? To show, to prove that you don't deserve it. And that attitude of, I don't deserve it, I deserve to go to hell, where does that, that happen at? In the heart. You're going to be judged according to the gospel. Turn to Galatians 3.22. But we see there, which show the work of the law written on their hearts. There's that the law again. Galatians 3.22 But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might, give, might be given to them that believe. Notice there's always a contrast. You have under sin, okay, and you have Jesus Christ. Almost like you could say you could be under sin or under Jesus Christ. And as we get further along, you're going to find out you're going to be under, you can be under one law that has to do with sin, or you can be under another law that has to do with Jesus Christ. To them that believe. 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. There you see it again. And they take it, it's all laws. It's talking about all laws, all commandments of God. We're free from all the commandments of God, all the laws. We're done. But see, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us uh, unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. I had to underline the word justified. Why? Because people keep saying, I'm saved by my faith. No, you're not. Faith alone, faith alone. You're saved by faith. You're saved by faith. No, you're justified by faith. You're saved by God's grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. Try reading 10 sometimes. I know people like to throw, leave that one out. But you're saved by God's grace, but you're justified by faith. Faith starts here, and there's going to be evidence of that faith by the life you live. Evidence. You're justified by faith. 25. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. You're not under this law that it's talking about here. Okay? Repentance leads your heart to the cross. I want to throw that in there because it says it brings us unto Christ. Wherefore, the law was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. That's where repentance comes in. And people take repentance out. You can't believe in Jesus Christ in the heart if you don't have godly sorrow in your heart for your personal sins that you sinned against Him, understanding the cost of that sin. 
pointing down. I was pointing over to the side to the down. Pointing down. The cost of sin. Hell. The lake of fire. Okay. Repentance leads your heart to the cross. We just read that there. Schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. We are no longer under the law. If this is the law, plural, the Old Testament laws, we keep reading these Old Testament laws, plural, we're not under the law. We're not under the law. See, the first thing we read, we're not under law, but under grace. I'm not under the laws, plural. I mean, law, but under grace. So let me ask you, is murder okay now? I'm a safe sinner. I'm not under the law. So is murder okay? What about adultery? Is adultery okay? One of the commands is, Thou shalt have no other gods, gods, plural, trinity, gods, plural, before me. Is Now is it okay to, to have the trinity and everything? Because we're not under the law. Turn to Romans 8.1. Let's find out what this law is that they like to brag about that they're not under, but they act like they're not under any laws. I'm only under grace. I'm only under grace. Is that what the Bible teaches? Turn to Romans 8.1. There is, therefore, now no condemnation going to hell, then tossed in the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. To them which are in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Now we see that again. Remember I always talked about it. Jesus is the foundation. He's the cornerstone. He's the head. He's the beginning. He's the first. He's the last. He's the beginning. He's the end. You're through Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ, going after Jesus Christ, which is what we're supposed to be doing as Christians. But we see there again, then which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. It doesn't say you don't sin. It says you don't walk after the flesh, but after the capital S, Spirit. Verse 2, here's where we get to the law that it's talking about that we're not under. You ready? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So when you read up there in Romans 6.14, it says you're not under the law. They never are specific about what law it's talking about. You're not under the law of sin and death. And when it says that you're under grace... Oops, sorry, sorry. Date. When it says that you're under grace, it's saying you're under the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And I always like to add our Lord, <laughs> not to scripture, but Christ Jesus is our Lord. Nobody can say that he is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And, um, and that's so true today. When you get saved, you look at people that say, well, I believe Jesus is the Lord. And you look at the life they're living, they don't believe Jesus is the Lord. And they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They believe that Jesus is the capital L Lord, singular. They would have repented. The fear of God would have been in them. They would have repented, believed, confessed both in prayer, asked God to save them. And when God saved them, that fear of the Lord would still be in them today as a saved sinner. But we see there, there's two laws there. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Okay. Okay hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We read up there where it talks about the schoolmaster. The laws are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. The laws, the law, the law of sin and death, is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, you can't be saved through the law of sin and death. There's no way that you can get out of the law of sin and death. It's weak through the flesh. You can't of your own accord. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. Condemns sin in the flesh. Okay? I always keep pushing this. I can tell someone who's lost when I'm preaching the plan of salvation, the ministry of reconciliation, I can tell them that Jesus Christ, past tense, paid for the sins of the world. He condemned sin in the flesh. He became sin who knew no sin. Okay? But today there's a big push where they're changing the gospel to, to say present tense. 
that Jesus Christ, present tense, paid for yours personally, individually, sin, and you're talking to a lost, hell-bound sinner, you're lying to him. He didn't, present tense, personally pay for your sins. He, past tense, paid for the sins of the world. You want your sins paid for? You go to the cross. You reject the cross, you're still under the law of sin and death. You're not under the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. You refuse to repent. You're still under the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. You forget to, you refuse to confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. You're still under the law of sin and death. Jesus did not die, present tense, for that person. Mm -hmm. I could go off on a whole other study I did about Jesus Christ. Um, there's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. What's the opposite of friends? Enemies. He said, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And the number one command is obey the gospel. The whole world is given that command. Obey the gospel. You obey it, you become a friend. You were the enemies. The Bible talks about it. We might read some of those verses. You were the enemy of God. Now are ye the friends of God. He died for you. That's what made you a friend of God. Repentance, belief, confess both in prayer, ask God to save you. When God saved you, you're now a friend of God. You're not the enemy of God. If you're the enemy of God, Jesus said, there's no greater love than this that a man laid down his life for his friend. If you're not his friend, he didn't lay down his life for you. This whole push, I'm just sorry, just going off a little bit, but condemn sin in the flesh. That's what happened on the cross. He took on the sins, the cost of the sins of the world as a whole. You want your sins paid for? You need to repent and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You reject that, your sins are not present tense paid for. We already mentioned it earlier. You're going to have to be answering for it at the great white throne judgment. Jesus is the one judging. You're going to have to pay for your sins for all eternity getting thrown in the lake of fire. I just, I was told that that lie and that garbage is a false convert, that Jesus present tense paid for my sins and I just have to believe, only believe. You don't have to be under any laws. We're not under the law. We're under grace. We're not under the law. We're not under any laws. That's works. I'm getting ahead of myself. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who's the us? Saved sinners. I'm not preaching Calvinism. Anybody, anybody can get saved today. Anybody can. It's up to you. Anybody can get saved. But the righteousness of the law was fulfilled in us. And it says might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There's times, I, I believe the word might's there, because there's times where you can set a bad example for a Christian. You might be truly saved, but you set a bad example where the lost world looks at you and thinks you're one of them. You're one of, the, you're one of us. And then when you tell them you're a Christian, you're a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman, they go, really? I didn't see you that way. I never thought, thought of you that way. Okay. That's instruction righteousness. But for doctrine, okay... The righteous of the law might be filled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S spirit. When you walk after the flesh, as we're going to get down here a little bit further, that's the law of the spirit. Of law, uh, that's the law of sin and death. But when you walk after the spirit, capital S spirit, that's the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you start walking after the flesh as a Christian. You're trying to resurrect the old man. The old man was under the law of sin and death. The new man is under the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. You see the difference there, brothers and sisters of Christ? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Carnally minded walking after the flesh. I mean, carnally minded walking after the flesh. But they that are spirit... But... But they that are after the Spirit, the things that are the spirits. You're either after the law of sin and death, 
the old man, carly minded, the heart loves the flesh, wants to please the flesh, and you're under the law of sin and death. When God goes to save you, the old man is crucified with Christ, the new man is raised up with Christ, and a new man is spiritually minded. He's now under the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. He loves Jesus Christ. He wants to please Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Why? Because they're still under the law of sin and death. Their flesh is still in charge. Their flesh is their master. They're trying to please their flesh. And when you love something, when you love your flesh, you heed the words of your flesh and obey your flesh. When you love Jesus Christ, the new man, you're heeding the words of God and obeying the words of God. Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Then my Father will love him and we will come and make our abode with him. Verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. Matthew 6, 24. Keep your hands there and turn to Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. I always get hit with it. Let's just talk about gold, the love of money and everything. Instruction and righteousness is still here. You cannot serve two masters. I don't know if some of the brethren out there have been in the military or been in jobs where you have multiple supervisors. You never put two supervisors in charge of the same group of people. In the military, you don't say, okay, Captain, you're in charge of these five people. Oh, you, Captain, you're also in charge of these five people. You don't do it because the group's going to listen to one over the other. They're going to love the one over the other. One's going to say do this. The other one's going to say don't do it. And whichever one they obey, that's the one they love. Some of them will obey him. Some of them will obey oh, this group. But you see what I'm saying? For instruction and righteousness, you don't have to have two masters. What's going on here? You cannot be under the law of sin and death. Your flesh cannot be your master, as well as claiming, I'm saved, and God, Jesus is my master, when your flesh is your master. You can't have it both ways, okay? I'm under the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, and Jesus is my master, but my flesh is also my master, and I'm under the law of sin and death. You can't be under both. You cannot serve two masters, and today the biggest thing is the biggest push is that you can have both. That's the biggest deception going on today and the biggest push that we see out there, brothers and sisters in Christ. You can have both. You can have two masters, two bosses. You can be under the law of sin and death and the law of the spirit of life. You can go to heaven and have the world, basically. You can be saved, easy believism, only believe, only believe, faith alone, and be saved and you can have the world. And when you look at those people, and we try to preach to them the real Jesus Christ out of the King James Bible, they hate the Jesus Christ out of the King James Bible. Even the ones that claim to be Bible-believing, and we talk with them, and they take repentance out or change the definition, and they take prayer out, they hate the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. They will love one master. Remember what it said there? No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, we see it. They hate the real Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. All these people who use the Bible perversions, these Babel buildings, all these false religions, they hate the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. They love their flesh. And ultimately, they love the lowercase g God of the world, all right, which is Satan. Okay, Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. And I'm sorry, brother, says Christ, but I see that I say I'm sorry because I know some people want to believe that certain people are saved, but when you start t putting them to the test, Paul's judging them. We're going to read some judgment in here. Paul's judging them whether they're saved or not. And it breaks our heart every time we come across somebody that we thought was saved and they're lost. It's not a joy for us to say, oh, they were lost, they were fake, we're going to throw a big party. No, it breaks our heart. Right. Go back to Romans 8, 6. Hopefully you had your hand there. 86. For to be carnally minded is death. 
uh, kind of what did we read about earlier? The law of sin and death. Carnally minded, that's sinfully minded. It's all about sin, 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 sin. Is death the law of sin and death? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What did we just read earlier? The, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And he will give us peace when he comes in. Yeah. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Enemy. That's what enmity is. It's the enemy of God. The law of sin and death, sin, is the enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God. There, I believe they're just shrinking it down. The law of God and the law of the spirit of life, which is in the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, that's the law of God that we're reading here, okay? The subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Law of sin and death, law of God. They ask me, are you under the law or under grace? I, you can say I'm under both. Unless you're going to be specific on what law you're talking about. If you're talking about am I under the law of sin and death, you're right. I'm not under the law of sin and death. I'm under grace. But they leave it generalized. Brother and sister Christ, when we get saved, you would go, go from being under the law of sin and death to the law of God. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. You're still under a law. And the lost professing Christian world hates that. And we're going to get into why, but they hate it. They can't stand it. I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. I'm under grace. That means I can do whatever I want and live however I want. Philippians 3.18. Keep your hands there in Romans 8.6. Philippians 3.18. For many walk of whom I have told you often, now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. And it goes on to say, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. They profess to be Christians, but they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? They believed, only believe, only believe, all things are possible if you only believe. They believed, but they're the enemies of the cross of Christ. Why is that? Because they didn't repent. They didn't confess both in prayer, and they didn't ask God to save them along with that belief, so that belief can be in the heart, it's just in the head. They're being told they can have the world and go to, he go to heaven, and they're going to go to hell. Okay. They're the enemies of the cross of Christ. Turn to Romans 5.10. It says right there, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. People under the law of sin and death, I was once the enemy of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you were the once the enemy of God when you were under the law of sin and death. That's why we have the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling. People are the enemy of God. They're being reconciled. That means they go from being an enemy of God to being a friend of God. Okay. Romans 5.10 For if, for if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. We're reconciled. But you cannot hold on to that old man and be under the law of sin and death and be a friend of Jesus Christ. It just doesn't happen. And they try to tell you that's the biggest lie right now going on out there in the world. You can be. You can keep the old man. There doesn't have to be a new man. There doesn't have to be a new birth. They changed the definition of what new birth is and what being a new creature in Christ Jesus means. They teach you you can have two masters. They won't actually go out and say it, but that's what they teach with the lives they live and the life that they promote and people that follow them. You can have two masters. Romans 8, 9. Where we left off in Romans 8, 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Capital S, spirit. It says not in the flesh. Now people will keep saying, what does that mean about sin? We'll go to talk about sin. It's not talking about that you will be sinless. We're not talking about sinless perfection. When it says not in the flesh, it's basically saying when we get down further, the flesh isn't in charge. He's not your master anymore. He doesn't, your flesh doesn't control you. 
your heart and your flesh are not on the same side anymore. There's a war that's going on between the heart, the soul, and the flesh. There's a fight going on. Why? Because you're not in the flesh, but in the capital S spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. That's so judgmental of Paul to say if. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. John, first, uh, in 1 John I think it is, um, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see if they were of God. Or to judge. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. The body is dead because of sin. You're no longer under the law of sin and death. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of God. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The new birth, the new man, the new creature, the old man is crucified with Christ. We're quickened. We're made alive. We're given a new life. We're a new man, new woman. Verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh. The flesh isn't the master anymore. Okay. To live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Now understand for instruction righteousness that, that's there that if you live in sin, there are certain sins that's going to pay a toll on this fleshly body. Absolutely. But for what we're talking about doctrine, if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. If the flesh is your boss, that means you're under the law of sin and death. You're going to go to hell and burn for all eternity. Keep reading. But if ye through the whole, capital S Spirit, the Holy Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, the heart and the, and the flesh aren't on the same side anymore. They're contrary one to another. They're warring with one with another. You do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. The law of the Spirit of life. And where's it in? Christ Jesus, our Lord. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It's just right there. So when they say it, when they read that part, well, we're not under the law, we're not under the law. And when you tell them about the changed life, God being the master, the old man is dead and buried, and the new man comes up. That's called the, we're preaching the gospel. The true gospel, plan of gospel. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer. Ask God to save you. He comes in, he saves you. The old man is dead and buried. Crucified with Christ. The law of sin and death. That old man that's under the law of sin and death is gone. Now the new man is under the law of God. And when we preach the law of God, they keep jumping up and down. Workspace salvation, workspace salvation. Because we're preaching the law of God. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, remember, as we read through here, remember what we read in Hebrews 8, how God had certain laws for the Jewish people to separate them from the lost world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Okay? If you're under the law of God, that separates a saved sinner from the rest of the world. We're set apart. We're different. And when you look at this world, brothers and sisters in Christ, and you look at all these professing Christians that look like the world, act like the world, laugh at the world's jokes, enjoy indulging in sin, who are you to judge me? What's going on here? They're not under the law of God. They're not set apart from this world. You are now called, now are we the sons of God. We're adopted in. We're part of the God's family. That's why we call each other brother and sister in Christ. We're part of the body of Christ. We're supposed to be separate from this world. And you've got people that say, well, I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. And they take that verse, and we're going to go back to that verse here shortly. But they take that verse, and they don't read everything before it, and they don't read the stuff after it. Why? Because they don't want to be under any law. 
They want to be able to go to heaven, have this world, and go to heaven when they die. Just enjoy the world, live in wicked, wicked sin, and the flesh is in charge, go for it, and they don't want to be under any law. Yea, hath God said, ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's what uh, Satan, the serpent, tempted Eve with. Ye can be as gods. You're under your own law. You make up the law. You decide what you, what's right and what's wrong, how you should live your life. All right? That's what's going on, brothers and sisters of Christ. Be very careful. When you get saved, you go from being under the law of sin and death, which is that's what it's talking about, where we're not under the law. It's saying the law is singular. It's a specific law. It's the law of sin and death. We're under, but we're under grace. What is that grace? We're under the law of God now. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. He's our master. He's the one that says, tells us what to do and we do it. Our love is for Him now, not the flesh, not this world. For Jesus Christ. We obey His word. We keep His word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. Why is that so hard for some people? Well, because they don't want to be under any master. They want to be their own masters. Bottom line, they want to be their own masters and do what they want. And ultimately, the master that they serve is Satan. Those are the only two people. Law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Satan or God? Jesus Christ, who is God. All right. That's the two choices. Turn to Galatians 2.21. We're done with Romans 8. Turn to Galatians chapter 2.21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. A lot of people say, well, we understand that. Keeping the Old Testament Levitical laws so uh, in their heart, they can try to bring people back under the law. They can mess up Christians when you read that. If righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You have a lot of groups out there that try to bring people back under the law of sin and death. You've got to keep the old Levitical laws. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. And that justifies the sin, basically. So now you can sin all you want. In the Old Testament, people, all they had to do is have a cage of turtle doves and... Every week have a cage of turtle doves. Why do you always have a cage of turtle doves? Oh, that's for the sin I, I plan on committing this week. I'll just go up and give an offering. And then I, I earned the right to do that sin. That's the attitude you get. But you get people trying to bring them back under the law of sin and death. That's the whole deception. When you tell people you have to keep the law and you're making it out to be the Levitical laws, what you're really doing is keeping people under the law of sin and death and trying to deceive people. And you can mess Christians up and try to get Christians to resurrect the old man that's underneath, that is under the law of sin and death. So when you start falling into this trap of, oh, we, you know, the synagogue, you know, we have to have to go to these Babel buildings, we have to keep the Sabbath day, we can only eat certain meats, and so on and so forth. Okay? Um, they do this also, I, put, I said prevent people from getting saved, keeping them under the law of sin and death. But you really can't keep someone from getting saved. If someone truly wants to get saved, my testimony, I was a lost, hell-bound sinner professing to be a Christian, and I was fed the lie that we're going through here. You're not under the law, that's not the lie, but you're not under the law, but under grace, but they took the law there to mean all laws. You're not under any law. You know, you're forgiven, and you can do whatever you want, live however you want, it's okay. I was fed that lie. And at some point, when all the, they try to keep you on a roller coaster high, those Babel buildings, it's all about flesh, 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 flesh. I look back, youth group, grade school, when you get older, being in the worship team, I was on the worship team, playing the bass guitar, uh, learned how to play the acoustic, uh, acoustic guitar, and it was just flesh, the camps, going to the camps, running all the time, flesh, 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 flesh. And when everything came dying down, you had to face the fact that you're miserable. Something's not right. And what's their solution, these battle building solutions? Well, come back to the battle building so we can give you another flesh high. You can get high again. 
But anytime you stop, it just something's wrong with this world. Something's wrong with you. Okay. And that's what happened to me. I got hit. I was like, this is something's wrong. They keep telling me I only have to believe and I'm saved and I can do whatever I want and whatever I want and I'm miserable. I mean, I had a house. I had a uh, swimming pool. Hot tub. I had a pool table. I had two living rooms in that house. Pool table. Um, I had uh, the second living room. It turned into a theater room. I'm talking about like the theater seatings, the big huge screen TV and everything. Had it really dark in there where I could watch all my movies and stuff. And I mean, it's like you had it all. And I was miserable. You know, everybody's just, hey, let's go out to eat. You know, let's go to these uh, concerts, rock concerts and stuff like that. I was miserable. When I just sat there and everything, all the flesh high was gone. And you start coming down. And I'm sitting there. Something's not right. I don't have true joy. I don't have true peace. I'm still under a certain law of sin and death. I got to a point where someone pointed me to the Bible version issue, and then I learned the true plan of salvation, and when God saved me, I was like, I know now. I look back, and I know why I was miserable. In my heart, I had, I had a desire for the truth. I just wasn't really... The flesh was in charge. He was the master, and he tried to keep me from the truth as much as possible. But God said, okay, now you're ready. I'm going to bring the truth to your way and see what you do. I cling to it. I held on to it. Turn to Galatians 5, 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Okay. Not under the law. It says, whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. So what is the law spoken by here, and what laws, if any, are you under? Okay, Are you under the law of sin and death, or are you under the law of God? The law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But here's the thing that I asked there. When I said, what is the law spoken by here, and what law, if any, are you under? I'm not asking for your profession. Okay, brothers and Christ, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking about the lost world. I'm not asking for their profession. What about the life they're living? Does the life they're living line up with their profession? I'm under the law of God, but their flesh is in charge. They're about the ways of the world. Does their life line up to it? What does their life tell you? How they're living their life? Like I said, we'll get to the sin part about still being in sin. A sinner... A saved sinner. I still sin. I still fail the Lord sometimes. Okay. But my flesh is not a master. I'm not indebted to my flesh. Not my heart, but my flesh. My heart, which is the soul, wars against the flesh. I mortify the deeds of the flesh. When I fall into sin, it eats me up. I'm not fall into sin. Brother corrected me. I gotta get certain words out of my vocabulary. I fell into temptation, and I chose to sin, and it just eat me up. It just tears me up inside. I just feel awful, dirty, despising the deeds of the flesh, mortifying the deeds of the flesh. That's the difference. Turn to Romans 6, 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Old man's dead and buried, new man is raised we also shall live with him I'm going to keep doing the contrast here law the uh, law of sin and death if we be dead with Christ there's the if again boy Paul is so judgmental by saying if and for you to say if that's judging the people he's talking about if we be dead with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more Death hath no more dominion over him. The law of sin and death. He overcame it. He fulfilled. Remember we talked about earlier? Here we're getting to it. He fulfilled the law. What's the law there? The law of sin and death. He fulfilled it. He overcame it. 
For in that for in that he died, he died unto sin once, law of sin and death. He overcame it once it is finished. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God, the law of the spirit of life. Which is what? In Christ Jesus. Who are we talking about here? Jesus Christ. Verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, the law of sin and death, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord, the law of sin and life, which is what, uh, sorry, the law of sin and death is what we're, be dead indeed to, unto sin, law of sin and death, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. See how they always keep contrasting one another. Let not sin therefore reign. It doesn't say not sinless. You have to be sinless. It says reign. Your flesh is not the king. It's not in charge. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. In other words, it's saying you're not supposed to be part of sin. The Bible talks about, I didn't put this verse down, that, that also are they that take pleasure in them that do them. It goes through all these sins, and it says also them that take pleasure in them that do them. I, I'm not doing it, but I'm watching it and enjoying it, but I'm not doing it. You watch, you play video games, it's all about murder and kill, 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 but I'm not really killing anybody, but you love watching it. Okay, with video games you actually are, but you get, because I'm talking about when you go around, you're the one controlling them, but movies, TV shows, video, you know, anime, okay, things that are going on in the world. So verse 13 said, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. You're not supposed to have a, take part in unrighteousness. I know somebody that um, they were buying alcohol for their wife that was a drunkard. According to the Bible, they're drunkards. And he's like, what else am I supposed to do? Uh, you don't buy alcohol for her? You're not supposed to be, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. You became the instrument of unrighteousness when you bought and provided sin to someone who has an addiction. All right. But it says there, um, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Yeah, the law of God, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. The old man is dead and buried. You're alive from the dead. You're a new man, new creature in Christ Jesus. And you're members as instruments of righteousness unto God. The law of the spirit of life. You're still under a law. You belong to God. Verse 14, if you haven't figured that part out yet, you belong to God. You're His. You love Jesus Christ. You keep His word. He tells you what to do and you do it. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, the law of sin and death, but under grace. That's where we get that word, grace, the law of God. When you're under grace, you're under the law of God. The law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. You're still under a law. You're just not under the law of sin and death. But they always try to use that verse to try to excuse them not being under any law, and they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. Verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. There we see it again. You're not under the law of sin and death. Therefore, we can just sin all we want. It's no big deal. God forbid. But we're under grace. The law of, of God, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. God forbid. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. Here we go again, two masters. His servants ye are to whom ye obey. Whether of sin unto death. The law of sin and death or of obedience unto righteousness. I find it interesting that it says obedience unto righteousness. 
What's it talking about here? You have to obey the gospel so you can be under the law of God. The law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. You have to obey the gospel that's found in the King James Bible. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. When God saves you, you are now under the law of God. You have to be obedient unto righteousness. The Bible talks about it. obey the gospel, obey the gospel. They have not all obeyed the gospel. Talk about the world. The number one command the whole world's given today is obey the gospel. Brother and sister in Christ, if you've gone through true biblical repentance, watch a lot of my videos, but it's a change of heart. Godly sorrow in your heart for your personal sins. Your heart goes from loving your flesh, sin, and wanting to please your flesh, sin, to Jesus Christ, loving Jesus Christ. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save him. We've obeyed the gospel. We've been obedient unto righteousness. Jesus Christ, all the way looking to Jesus Christ. That's how we can believe in our heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our personal sins. We can say that. Anybody who comes to the cross broken in true biblical repentance can say, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. That's in the heart. When you skip repentance, take out every all this other stuff, and it's just believe. It's up here. Right. You're not obedient unto righteousness. Verse 17, But God be thanked that ye were, were past tense, the servants of sin. Two masters. You can't have two masters. So your one master, the old man, was the servant of sin, the flesh. But ye have obeyed from the heart. Notice it says, not the flesh. The heart, not the mind. The heart. Repentance is a change of heart. But ye have obeyed from the heart. Belief happens in the heart. The, the form of doctrine which was delivered you, that form of doctrine which was delivered to you, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. My master is Jesus Christ. I don't have two masters. Brothers and sisters in Christ, looking at your lives, the Bible talks about check whether you be in the faith. Do you have two masters? Or do you have one? Is Jesus Christ your master? Something to think about. But the doctrine which we have delivered unto you. Turn to Matthew 6.24. We're going to read this one more time because there's a big evident right there. Go ahead. No man can serve two masters. Matthew 6.24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't have two masters. I just said that right there when we read uh, Romans 6, 8 through 18. talks about servants. Whose servants are you? In other words, what mass, who's your master? Is it God? Is it Jesus Christ? Capital G God? Or is it the lowercase g God in your flesh? Which is it? It can't be both. 1 Timothy 4.1 talks about this. Now the Spirit express, speaketh expressly. We talked about this in a previous study. 1 Timothy 4.1. I need to pause. We've just been going at it for a while. I need to pause. We're almost done. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The number one doctrine of devils is they go against absolute truth. They don't want you finding the true plan of salvation. So they try to get rid of this King James Bible that's God's perfect written word in English. The second do main doc biggest doctrine of devils is they'll go and preach another Jesus, which we have not preached. This is Paul talking in Corinthians. I don't have this written down, but they preach G another Jesus that we have not preached. They preach another gospel, which we have not preached, and they get people to receive another spirit, which we have not received. We have the capital S spirit in us. They don't. Something's wrong here. What's going on? You got people coming in trying to keep people under the law of sin and death and trying to keep people from finding the law of God, finding God's grace. They don't want you to find God's grace. Okay. But you see doctrines of devils. And up there we read in Romans 6, 
17, but thanks be, let's see, but God, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. He keeps going and talks to 1 Corinthians because people keep coming in and screwing everything up. They keep changing the doctrine. They're doctrines of devils. Galatians, same thing happens. People come in and try to change the doctrine of the gospel to turn it into doctrines of devils. Turn to Galatians 4.21. This always gets to me when, you read, when I read this. It's like, Galatians 4.21, Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? <laughs> ye that desire to be under the law. We've got a lot more clouds. The sun's going down. It's getting colder out here. But I'm going to try to keep this through. But it gets me. It's like, why do people desire to be under the law? Well, when you actually look at it, people do not desire to be under the law of sin and death. They don't want it. You talk to people in their right mind, and people, once they realize what hell really is, you know, people, even people in hell, they don't want to be there. Okay, but you have some people that say, yeah, I'll go to hell, I don't care, and just live like the, you know, the world. No, they don't know what hell is. If they knew what hell really was, they would not want to go there. So my biggest thing is, is they don't want to go to hell. They don't want to be under the law of sin and death. But you read this, and it says, under the law, do not hear the law. Okay, what's going on here? Turn to Matthew eleven twenty eight. What is it they really don't want? They just don't want to be under the law of God. They don't want to be in the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Why? Because then God is your master. He tells you what to do. Jesus tells you what to do, and you do it. They don't want that. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So when we read up there in Galatians, tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? Why do people want to be under the law? No, it's not that they really want to be under the law and go to hell. They just don't want God as their master. They don't want to obey God. They'd rather, have the, they'd rather deal with the world and go to hell than to have Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ of Scripture, not these Antichrist Jesus of the, of the Bible perversions, the true Jesus Christ of the King James Bible for English-speaking people, not these counterfeit Jesuses. They don't want Him to be their, their master. Remember we talked about it. They hate Him. They'll love one master and hate the other, or they'll hold to the one and despise the other. They despise the real Jesus Christ. They hate the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. They don't want Him as their master. That's the whole push. And I'm hoping I'm just driving this home, brother, says Christ. You can be under the law of sin and death, or you can be under the law of God, which is the, the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. You can't be under both. And they're so vague when they always try to grab that verse. Okay. Romans 6.14, they always try to be so... Uh, the law of, We're not under the law, the law, but under grace. But they don't explain what the law is. And they never ever say, well, we're under the law of God, and therefore God is our master, and we do what God tells us to do. The changed life. Bible says to obey the gospel. They won't. They don't like the true gospel. They hate it. They hate the Jesus Christ of the true gospel. Now, people today are saying they do not wish to be under the law. I just said that. They. But here's the thing. They piggyback on Paul's ministry and try to create one of their own. Do we see that out there today? People don't, you want to go to heaven when you die, right? You want to go to heaven, paradise, for all eternity, right? So we have to piggyback on Paul because we don't want to be under the law of sin and death, but we don't want to be under the law of God either. 2 Peter 2.19, what are those people? 2 Peter 2.19. Why they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants, I put in parentheses of my, in my notes, of the law of sin and death. They are the servants of corruption. Servants of the law of sin and death. They're promising liberty from the law of sin and death, but all they're doing is maintaining that you stay under the law of sin and death. 
For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. What's their biggest speech? You don't have to be under the law of sin and death, nor do you have to be under the law of God. When people start teaching you have to be under the law of God, that's works-based salvation. Okay? You can have the world and be a Christian. Now, when we were false converts, brothers and sisters in Christ, we knew something wasn't right. <laughs> something just wasn't right. How many of, I mean, I've heard testimony after testimony. There's some people who just didn't know anything about Jesus, and they might be just newly saved, and they came straight to Jesus. The, they got, they were blessed with getting it right the first time. Someone, God brought them to the truth, and they got it right the first time. The true plan of salvation, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. But a majority of the brethren that I talked to, brothers and sisters in Christ, their testimonies, they were lied to. They were deceived. They were deceived by, you can have this world and be a Christian. And they finally got to a point where they were broken and something wasn't right. Their heart's like, Ugh, something's not right. I'm supposed to be able to go to heaven when I die, but there's something in me that says, I don't think I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Without going through the true plan of salvation, you're not going to have assurance of salvation. These people out there that teach easy believism, they don't have assurance of salvation. They have to talk themselves into believing that they're, they're eternally secure. They have to keep talking themselves, talking themselves into it. They don't have that security. Well, how do we know this? I have my testimony as a false convert. You have your testimony as a false convert. You didn't have the assurance of salvation. You had to keep trying to talk yourself into it. Convince yourself that you're eternally secure. That's not something you should have to do. At first, maybe when you're newly saved and God's working on you, but you're supposed to get to a point where you are secure. I know I'm sealed into the day of redemption. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know ye have eternal life. Did I truly obey the gospel? Am I under the law of God? Yes, I am saved. I am sealed into the day of redemption. But you're looking at a man who was professing Christian from the age of, I want to say, 13 to the age of um, 35. That's a long period to be doubting your salvation. Okay, I don't believe in Peter Ruckman's teaching, and I don't believe Peter Ruckman for one second. How often do you doubt your salvation? Well, for a few seconds every month. He was putting on a show. Putting on a big show for the crowd. I don't doubt my salvation anymore, period. I haven't doubted my salvation for three years. I got safe... Um, Five. I started learning the truth and started getting into some of Brother Brian's like Bible version issue and then getting into some of the Bible studies five years ago. But I always say around four years I've been saved. But I've been ha I've had this, I'll go with, I'll even shrink it down to two years. I've had insurance of salvation for two years, not doubting it one bit. And I've gone through some things. I have fallen from the Lord. I have given in to temptation. I've chosen to sin. I've invited sin into my home and it destroyed this home but I didn't doubt my salvation you get to a point where you have an assurance of salvation these lost people who profess to be saved they don't have an assurance of salvation they have to keep talking themselves into it and they'll try to put on a good show behind the camera and smile anyway we're one little bit and we're almost done. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, the biggest thing I want you to take away from this is that when people try to use, this lost world tries to use Romans 6.14 to justify not being under any laws, period. They try to add an S there. Instead of saying we are not under the law and then explain that that law there is talking about the law of sin and death, but under grace, what is that? The law of God. The law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. They won't say that. They'll just say we're, un we're not under the law. And anybody that tries to pull you back under the law or any law, it's works-based salvation. No, it isn't. Now, I just want to end this with this. Am I teaching sinless perfection? Turn to Romans 7.25. Am I teaching sinless perfection? No. Remember what I said? It's talking about reigning. It's talking about your flesh being the master. My flesh is not the master. I can be tempted by my flesh. I can be tempted by this world. And I can 
fall into that temptation, and I can choose to sin and fail the Lord, drop my cross. Remember what the Bible says, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily. You're going to be dropping your cross daily. Lord, I shouldn't have had those thoughts. Please forgive me. I just sinned right there. I had those thoughts and I shouldn't have had them. Please forgive me. There isn't one day that I don't go without thinking something I shouldn't. And I have to say, Lord, please get this out of my head. Start singing some hymns. Okay. Romans 7, verse 25. I'm sorry. Romans 7, 21 through 25. Actually, I think we might be going through 24. I don't know why I've got 25 down here. See, I made a mistake. Romans 7, 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Notice it says law of sin. The word death is dropped. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? There's verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself, may, myself sir, the law of God. My mind, the law of God. The spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. But with the flesh, the law of sin. There's another law that I'm still a part of. I'm still in this body of flesh. I'm only two-thirds redeemed. My soul's redeemed. My spirit's redeemed. My flesh is not. I'm still under the law of sin. The word death gets dropped. I'm not under the law of sin and death. We're still going to sin as saved sinners, brothers and sisters in Christ. But our flesh is not in charge. We're not to justify our sin. We're supposed to mortify the deeds of our flesh. When we, fall, when we choose to sin, we're supposed to be mortified of our actions. We're supposed to fear God. And that fear is supposed to be a motivator to get us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily, and go back to following Jesus Christ. Go out and follow me, the Bible says. All right? It's supposed to be a motivation. Okay, turn to John 1.9, this is the last verse we're going to turn to. Brother says Christ, I'm not teaching sinless perfection. And the lost world will try to twist it and try to say I am, but I'm not. Bottom line, you're not, your flesh is not your master. You're not under the law of sin and death, but you're under the law of God. You're under one or the other. There is no, I'm not under any of that, and I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. Absolutely not. You're still lost and on your way to hell. You're still under the law of sin and death. You've just been deceived into being promised liberty when they themselves are the servants of corruption. They're the servants of law, uh, the, the law of sin and death. They're the servants of the flesh. Okay. 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Who's the us there? It says again, if we, who's the we, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Who's the we and the us there? Saved sinners. Why would we be given this warning if we confess our sins if we were supposed to be sinlessly perfect? If I'm teaching you have to be sinlessly perfect, brothers and sisters in Christ, then why tell us that warn us that we can still ask God for forgiveness in the life of a Christian. Okay? I'm not pushing that you can be sinlessly perfect. Okay? I'm not pushing um, Calvinism where people are chosen. No, anybody can get saved. But today the biggest deception, I'll say it again to drive it home, the biggest deception we see today is people are being told you can be free from the law of sin and death and you don't have to be under the law of God. You don't have to be under the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. And that's what all these people out there, the easy believism, the faith alone, uh, Calvinism that we just talked about, um, Mormons, um, Jehovah's Witness, Catholics, you know, 
even when you get away from people of religions that even that have a counterfeit Jesus and you get to Buddhism and stuff like that, it's all about them saying that you can get out from being under the law of sin and death, but you don't have to be under the law of God. And they're lying to people. And people are going to hell left and right. Okay? Um, what I mean by that is there's so many people that are buying into it. The Bible says that good words and fair speech is deceiving the hearts of the simple. Okay, you got people that they want the flesh. They're simple and they're being deceived. They're so flesh driven and so about the flesh, they'll buy into it hook, line, and sinker. And we can't, it's almost impossible to reach a false convert for Jesus Christ today saying, hey, you're, there, you've been lied to. You're still under the law of sin and death. You're not under the law of God. You even live like you're not under the law of God. You have people who profess that's works-based salvation. You're, then that means you're still under the law of sin and death. And we try to preach truth to them. And the majority of people today don't want to hear it. I can't remember the last time I heard someone say, uh, you know, I used to, when I first got saved, King James Video Ministries, the... Uh, Brian led me to the Bible version issue. Now, you know, the, lot, the, the enemies will always say, well, see, see, he said Brian saved him. Brian led me to the Bible version issue. Brian led me to the true plan of salvation found in the perfect written word King James Bible. God led, uh, Brian led me to the real Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. God saved me. Jesus Christ of the King James Bible saved me. And put me under the law of God. The law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. But we used to see people on there. Oh I just got saved. Thank you for preaching the truth under King James Video Ministries. And showing me the truth. The King James Bible. Brother Sister Christ in the last year or two. I really haven't seen much of that anymore. Have, have you? People coming on going thank you. I just found you guys. And. And you're preaching absolute truth and you led me to the true plan of salvation and God saved me. Praise the Lord. So we can praise the Lord. Remember, the, uh, all heaven rejoices over only over one soul. Not only, but over one soul. It's worth rejoicing and over one soul that's saved. So we can all rejoice together. But I haven't really seen it that much today. The deception is just so huge and out there. Okay? So brothers and sisters of Christ, stay firm. Stand in the doctrines of that were once taught to you from the King James Bible. Sometimes you start off with false doctrines. Okay? Um, in my lost life as a professing Christian, I was taught a lot of false doctrine and then brought to the truth. But once you have the truth, the King James Bible, the true doctrines, we've already went through them in our study, 1 Timothy 4, I think it was, expository study, went through a lot of the different doctrines in the Bible. You hold on to them and you cling to them. You stand firm. Stand, stand, stand. Don't faint. Don't falter. Okay? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay? Brothers and sisters of Christ, stand, stand, stand. I just can't say that enough. Stand, stand, stand. So thank you for following along in this study. Remember, you can't have both as masters. And you can't say, I'm not under one, and say I'm not on the other either. You can't say I'm not under either, and you can't say I'm not under both. You can't, okay, I gotta say it right. You can't say I'm under both, I'm getting cold and tired, and you can't say I'm not under either. It doesn't work that way. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.